Today we're going to be discussing the athletically gifted students. This is a video of a one-year-old displaying his advanced motor skills. Okay, the mother of this child was so proud of her son that she posted the video on the internet and it went viral and a professional soccer team in England signed the child to a sports contract. Although it was a publicity stunt, it got the attention of the world. There are some cognitive and affective characteristics of athletically gifted students. Some of the physical qualities for an athletically gifted student will be their body type, and their high level of energy, and also their physical abilities or their motor skills. Their talent or skill would be their ability to mesh with a team or their ability to perform a specific sport skill. Their mentality would be their intelligence level, their work ethic and their intensity, their curiosity, and also their ability to handle pressure. There is an ultimate combination um, when we look at athletically gifted students that we're looking for, and that is an individual with their physical ability, high school level intelligence, and mental toughness. These types of people perform at such high levels that they might be Olympic champions or win um, a trophy in the NFL, the, NF, um, the NBA, or maybe even the green jacket at the Masters. Effects of culture and environment on these particular athletes. Um, Gifted athletes often are at a competitive level with athletes typically older than them. But for age cutoff policies, they compete with less superior athletes. An example of this is in um, the 2012 London Olympics, Simone Biles was physically prepared and ready to compete. However, she didn't meet the age cutoff. She needed to be 16 and was not yet. Acceptance. Athletes, especially those that are gifted, are very well accepted in our society. We see that quite often, especially with those who are talented in your professional sports and even at the college level as well. Along with that acceptance, though, comes a great deal of pressure. When they are able to achieve great things, then more greatness is typically expected of these athletes. And therefore, they have to have a lot of perseverance um, to keep making those great gains. It's a very overwhelming feeling being the fastest man in the entire world. Faster than any other human being before him. Since two devastating performances in the 2008 Olympics, Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt has dominated the sport of track and field. He has destroyed the sprint events, smashing world records, and making the impossible look routine. Usain Bolt has pretty much rewritten everything that we thought we knew about world-class sprinting. And what he's shown us in terms of what is possible, I think has revolutionized the sport. It's almost as if Everybody else before him didn't really exist. He's by far the most naturally gifted athlete that I've ever seen. Tall, powerful, and graceful, the world's fastest man over both 100 and 200 meters wants only one more thing. My main goal is to become a legend. I like I want to be a legend. I'm keep winning year after year, so that motivates me to keep going. And while he keeps on winning, his impact on the sport is immeasurable. 
It's been huge. I mean, words can't really describe it. What he's done, having the world record, setting him at the major events, which a lot of people can't do, it's extremely hard. You know, and then to come back and break another record in another event is something that people haven't done before. He has become the man no one can catch. I know what it takes to stay on top, and that's the aim. I, I told you guys I want to be a legend. I can't be complacent if I want to be a legend, so I gotta keep working on it and keep focused. So you heard it straight from the fastest man in the world's map. The pressure of having to keep gaining those um, new goals and being the fastest man in the world. Okay, as educators, we know how important the role of the family and community is for all st all kids. But with the academically gifted, because of their heightened senses, it's much more important. Um, and it has a profound effect on their development. However, because the school system does not typically address athletically gifted students, the family and community has an even greater role in supporting these athletes. Some suggestions for family members and community when supporting athletically gifted students is to balance your adult expectations of these ch children, that we focus on them in other aspects of their life and not just them as a star basketball player or a star gymnast. And in the 2016 Olympics, there's a story of an athlete, a swimmer named Maya Dorada, who from an early age has been supported by her family to do much more than just be a swimmer. There's a picture of me in a Stanford cap when I was like six years old and my dad had written Dorado on it. That's like outrageous for a six-year-old to be thinking like, I'm gonna swim for Stanford one day. But not for Maya, who was always in search of a greater challenge. She was 13 when she went to high school, 15 when she got a perfect math score on the SAT, and just 17 when she entered Stanford. Maya Dorado is going to be a first-time Olympian. It's just like the purest expression of joy and relief that I think I've ever had. And with a high-powered job awaiting her in Atlanta, Dorado is prepared to make Rio her first and last Olympic Games. It was nice to have the hard stopping point knowing do everything as best you can, see how good you can be, and then try something new. That made me more excited to go into this Olympic year, and it's clearly been working. Maya was able, and her family was able, to balance her athletic talent with other important things in her life so that she was not only seen as a swimmer, but much more than that. Developmental milestones for those that are athletically gifted, um, you see those milestones at a very early age. Um, they will tend to have their general and fine motor skills achieved at a 30% advanced age. This particular chart shows you the general motor skills of the normal age child and when these same abilities take place for those children that appear to be gifted. Now these type um, of skills are only going to be seen or going to first be seen by parents, family members, and friends of the family. Um, and in particular, this one right here that's highlighted skips with alternating feet. Um, a kindergarten teacher here locally who has had 30 years under her belt as a kindergarten teacher um, has seen the correlation that when a child can skip with two feet, um, they are ready to read. This second one it talks about the fine motor skills and it demonstrates the same thing that we saw with the gross motor skills, that those um, that are categorized as gifted do it 30% advanced at advanced age. So those children that we see the skills taking place at that 30% advanced age, um, and you're athletically gifted are those kinesthetic type learners. Um, they are going to be the ones in the classroom who are going to need to move 
that's because that's where they show their skills. They show their skills um, outdoors, um, out on the field, out on the court somewhere. Um, they tend to have very good physical memory. Uh, they learn quickly and permanently what they do as they are learning it. Um, they um, will often be your athlete, athletes. They'll be dancing and other physical activities. Um, they are generally very well coordinated and have an excellent sense of their body and the space and the body timing. They have uh, great hand-eye coordination and they typically have quick reaction. There are some similarities and differences from athletically gifted students to the general population. Most kids enjoy praise. They are encouraged by all their successful experiences. It makes them continue um, putting forth effort. They need acceptance from their peers as well as the adults in their life. And positive relations are very important. However, the differences here is athletically gifted students excel at motor skills. You can see the difference with them and their precision in their movements. They are challenged by difficult athletic um, activities and a lot of times prefer to participate in athletic activities with um, kids that are older than them because their skills are so advanced. And they have high expectations for themselves. A lot of them are perfectionists. So how did these type of gifted children become stereotyped? Often children are identified by one physical ability. However, research cautions against a unidimensional approach. Abbott and Collins, in a 2004 study, denoted the importance of physiological skills in talent identification and development. They stated that athletes should not be excluded or identified based solely on one attribute, such as height. They also maintain that other factors like speed and agility may compensate for a particular weakness. One example of this would be Spud Webb. And this is a short video clip to show you what he was able to achieve even without the particular height that his sport usually calls for. I didn't actually to win it, nobody believed. Being here dunk one and that'll be it. You know, I need a repertoire dunk so I could do have it dunk since 12th grade. And now, Spud, first attempt. The clear crowd favored but took everyone by surprise, including his teammate and defending champion Dominique Wilkins. themselves in their peers in particular sports 
and how to compensate um, for the sake of the team. At this, at this age group is expressive, they're typically spontaneous and egocentric. Um, in the 10 to 13 year old range, they are looking for acceptance among their peers. This age group tends to seek out close best friend relationships. They will be very loyal to a friend or a particular friend group. Exclusion also arises in this time frame. 14 to 17 year old adolescents look for their fit in the world. Where do they fit in in the world that they are currently in? They tend to uh, shift self-identity to test the waters of the world that they live in. Inconsistencies will appear in what they say or claim and true actions. 16 to 13 year olds are establishing their independence. They understand that they are individual, but they still need to contribute to the team's greater good. And emotionally, some of the developmental traits for um, the athletically gifted students are they have high levels of confidence, not only in themselves, but also from coaches and their parents giving them encouragement along the way, offering for them not to give up. So they do have high levels of confidence. They're optimists because they look at the next level and this is where I need to go and they're positive about their capabilities. They have the ability to control their anxiety level and they are also very resilient and they can take setbacks and strive. Thank you very much.